Unions build. Roads, bridges, and buildings. Yes. But with training and apprenticeship programs, unions build much more. A safer community, careers without crushing debt, and a route to rebuild the American middle class. Unions build the future. And we're just getting started. Join us. Today on Built to Last, building with care. Oh, I thought that was just decoration. Tomorrow's electricians. So how many people want to become an apprentice of Local 134? And safety wins. And only one key is the key that opens up the truck door. Pick up a hammer. It's time for Built to Last. Built to Last is brought to you by the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Labor and Management Committee and Armstrong Ceilings. Faster, easier, better. Welcome to Built to Last, I'm Mark Nelson. And I'm Monica Peterson. We're at the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Apprenticeship and Training Center where the carpenters of tomorrow gain insight into every aspect of the trade. They put that insight to work on job sites every day. But after a job is done, they move on to the next, rarely having the chance to see the fruits of their labor. But we gave two carpenters a chance to return to a job site to see how their work helps those who live with impaired vision. Hadley is a 100-year-old institution. In uh, 1920, William Hadley, here in Winnetka, started a correspondence school for people who wanted to learn Braille, and we've expanded since then. People would say to us, your children are so quiet, we never hear them. Uh, well, the fact is no student ever came to Hadley. So we have a staff of people who are out there querying the, the older individuals um, um, who are new to vision loss. What do you need from us? What kinds of services would you find helpful? And we are the largest provider of distance education programming to blind and visually impaired peoples worldwide. Maybe about 10,000 learners a year. We worked with them very hard to figure out a plan to expand and raise the vertical um, size of the building and do an addition on two areas of the building. The building was past its prime. Uh, it's, it was a solid building, I guess. I wasn't one of the carpenters who had to deal with it. We had no elevator, we had no accessible bathrooms. Well, they decided to go ahead and do a full gut renovation, uh, which included all the mechanical systems, electrical systems, plumbing, etc. Whether it's a carpenter, an electrician, plumber, if there's a better, faster, easier, more efficient way to do something, we want to hear about it. Well, we've got a couple carpenters coming in, Matt and Anthony. They worked on the building. They spent an entire year here. It's going to be really thrilling to show them exactly what their changes have meant to people with low vision, not just here and in the building, but worldwide. Thank Good you. Great to, see to see you guys. Yeah, you too. You guys put so much time into this building, we thought we'd show you around the finished products. Excellent. Sounds good. So you remember what it looked like when we uh, when we started. It's very different, very transformed. I can tell you that everybody who walks through that door, the first word out of their mouth is, wow. So you really did an excellent job, and we want to show you through the, the finished product. Great. Follow me. All right, we have a number of low vision features. We've got really sharp dividing line between the carpet and the wood, which helps cane users detect where they're going and where they are oriented to the room. The uh, wainscoting is a contrasting color to the walls that also offers some contrast for people with low vision. This is our brand new kitchen. It's beautiful. Hey, Anthony, remember when we notched this out? Yep. What was that for, Ed? Someone has a mobility cane. They lean their cane up against the countertop. That little notch prevents it from sliding off and falling down. We have employees that are visually impaired as well, so it's important the building reflect um, accessibility and the standards of accessibility that we are preaching to the world. So this is an example of another accommodation for persons with vision impairments. Essentially, one side of the wall has tactile wallpaper, so you know when you can feel this wallpaper what side of the building you're touching. Oh, I thought that was just decoration. So it's just a relief sometimes for folks to not have to struggle to just to do some simple things that, that's just really a matter of design. One of the things that always delivers a better quality project is having some passion behind what you're doing. 
Uh, so when I was on site working with our superintendent and our trades foreman, I would make sure we try to tell them, you know, this isn't just another office building, right? This isn't just another renovation. And actually a lot of them asked how they could help and, and really were interested in learning more about, you know, how do they produce Braille and, and what type of education services they had. The basement is where we get a lot of our production done, our hard copy Braille, our large print. So Matt, this is a workshop on the human eye and this is uh, printed in Braille. So how does this translate? Ed? How do I know what letter is what? So a Braille letter is a group of dots within a cell of six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. A Braille letter is a combination of dots within that cell. So the letter H, for instance, is dot one, two, five. That's H. Uh, so each Braille letter is represented by a combination of dots within a six spaced cell. Let me show you our new uh, virtual reality room. Can't wait to see this. This is a chance for people who don't have vision impairments to sort of experience visually what it's like to be navigating traffic, for instance. Put on these goggles. These goggles actually simulate macular degeneration. Oh wow, I can barely see anything. So the purpose of this room is to give people who don't have vision loss the experience of somebody who does. Primary care health practitioners, for example, your physician, maybe an occupational therapist who's working with a patient with low vision, family members. This um, experience helps somebody really relate to the experience that their loved one has. There's lots of compensatory skills you can develop so that you can cope with that loss of vision. That's what Hadley's all about. We're coming up to our 100th anniversary, 2020, and we needed a jump start to, to shape our programming and our direction for the next hundred years. The age of the building was one challenge, um, but understanding the future was also really important for this project and the client and, uh, and delivering on with Hadley's students' future needs. There is a universal understanding of what it is Hadley wants to continue to do and do more of, starting from the board of directors, going down to every level of the people who work here, and the trades who helped make this happen. Really fell in love with their mission and, and the services they provide, so it held a special place in our heart. Our experience when we were in the building was you, we could see the degree of pride on the faces of the, the men and women who were in here working. They took enormous pride in this work, and you could see it. You could see it in their faces, and we're seeing it in the result a program called Chicago Builds. It's housed at Dunbar High School here in Chicago, which is located adjacent to our Union Hall. It is. It's a bush. I knew about trades, but I didn't really know like what to do to get into a trade. At Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions, we take great pride in making a positive difference in the lives of people. With the broadest portfolio in the industry and the technical performance to back it up, you can design and install with confidence. Our ceiling construction expertise, training, and pre-engineered ceiling solutions make it easy for you to seamlessly transition from one end of the building to the other. Improve construction efficiencies and keep every job on time, on budget, and on the mark with Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions. Faster, easier, better. When you need a concrete contractor for your commercial project, you can't waste time waiting through countless unproven contractors who don't specialize in the job type you need or service your area. ConcreteIL.com lets you browse Northern Illinois' top contractors to find the perfect fit for your exact needs. You can filter our vetted list of contractors by both job type and location, and even request proposals directly through the site. Thinking commercial concrete? Think ConcreteIL.com. From bridges and trains to iconic high-rises, have you ever wondered who's powering Chicago? Power Unlike our sports heroes, they go unnoticed. Yet they proudly keep our businesses, homes, and great city running. IBEW Local 134 electricians and the electrical contractors have the experience, training, and reliability to keep Chicago open for business. Welcome back to Built to Last. The hardworking men and women of the skilled trades shape the face of our nation every day, as you'll see in this next story. The IBW itself, it, you know, they call it a brotherhood or a sisterhood, because that's what we're, we're all about. We're about taking care of each other. Uh, we want the best for the international brotherhood of electrical workers, and the way to do that is to share knowledge and information with each other so that everybody can raise their standards across the country. 
We're getting together with about 100 training directors from around the country to network, uh, share some best practices, and to uh, steal from one another, so to speak, you know, because we're really sharing a lot of information. Uh, we have a lot of new trained directors that attend this and a lot of seasoned trained directors, so we all get to learn from each other what we can bring back to our local and make it the best that it can be. Uh, and that's what the NETDA is, one of those conferences where best practices get talked about. And sometimes training centers will pick up on a, a best practice from another training center. Chicago has been blessed with a lot of work coming up. And in order to complete that work, we're going to need more journey persons, which means we need more apprentices that are trained. What, what our apprenticeship programs are going to be faced with in the future, at least in my opinion, is how do we recruit? We understand how to educate the new learner, the younger people that are coming up, but who, who do we focus that training on? How do we get those people into our programs? IBW Local 134 and the Electrical Contractors Association in Chicago have a very strong and unique partnership. We work kind of hand in hand with them for everything. Our apprenticeship program works with the Chicago Public School System in a program called Chicago Builds. It's housed at Dunbar High School here in Chicago, which is located adjacent to our union hall. It is, it's a push. I knew about trades, but I didn't really know like what to do to get into a trade. Uh, Chicago Builds, I heard from a, another classmate, and so we have HVAC, carpentry, welding, and electrical. I always did very well in school. Like I had high SAT scores and um, good grades, so I could have gotten to like majority of college that I applied for. It, but I was more interested in um, electrical. This is a trade where you have to be healthy for and you know, able to carry heavy things and you know um, be able to ID certain materials when they ask for it. Our students are, are they're always smiling through the whole entire time. Nobody's falling asleep, uh, and that's because they're engaged in the class. So how many people want to become an apprentice of Local 134? So today is the culmination of the entire Chicago Builds program in that these students, they've gone through their training now, uh, they've graduated from the program at Chicago Builds in the electricity field, and today they're actually getting their first jobs. Christopher Schmitz. The last day today we, um, we got assigned to our contractors and so we called our contractors today and um, they tell us where to come in on Monday if we go straight to the job site or if we go into the shop. It's a group of trainees that hopefully will someday become apprentices. Okay. I do the trainee program for six to nine months and then I could take the test at the end for the apprenticeship and if you get into the apprenticeship I would start the school in Alsip. Ah, my uncle and my cousins in the trade. One is an electrician for Ford and the other is an electrician for UPS. Majority of my family they always push college but um, I just said like I know my uncle makes pretty good money so I was asking him some questions about it he told me that it would be definitely a good career. I definitely hope to. Three and for fourth year apprentices and uh, be on my way to being a journeyman soon. We are always looking for the best and brightest students to apply. We want those people in our program. Everybody understands that it's, it's a, a source for young, uh, energetic uh, candidates to, to broaden the horizons of the future of the IBW and NECA contractors. We make a very strong effort in getting our message out to high school counselors, parents, and students about what the electrical industry offers. So this week, talking about uh, the Chicago Builds Program at, at the National Electrical Training Directors Association, uh, and, and seeing the response from other training directors across the country, um, you realize what a special program this is. So while Chicago built this program, uh, the national level uh, of all training directors is going to make it a, a great uh, program into the future. The future for the construction industry is bright. We have a lot of opportunities and areas that we can expand. We just got to get there first with the most trained workforce that's out there and capture that work. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, there are currently over 250,000 job openings in the skilled trades. That's saving us a lot of time on layout. It's saving us a lot of waste material that's very little to nothing being cut in the field. Keeping restaurants and hotels up to date with the latest design trends is a constant challenge. Finding qualified contractors isn't at finishingchicago.com. We work with top designers and general contractors who use the latest painting, 
drywall finishing, and wall covering techniques in Chicagoland's premier hotels and restaurants. The hospitality industry relies on FinishingChicago.com as its free resource to find quality finishing contractors. For a great finish, start with FinishingChicago.com. 24-7, IBEW Local 9 linemen are there protecting you and your family from the moment you wake up with the power in your home, on your way to work, lighting the way and easing congestion, plus keeping you safe with traffic lights and cameras. So the next time you're at a stoplight, pass under a power line, or just pull into your brightly lit neighborhood, think of your friends at IBEW Local 9. We'll continue to light the way for you. Meet us online at IBEW9.org. From the ground up to the inside out, new technologies continue to make the jobs of the trades faster and more efficient. Check this out. Most people in construction are forward thinking folks. We're always problem solving. We're always trying to build a better mousetrap. Parents and I had a vision of being ahead of the curve um, with instilling innovation into a company that's been around 40 years. The market is looking for and asking for cold floor metal buildings. Uh, fire code, especially in the city of Chicago, it's, a, it's an efficient way to get these buildings built and built safely. We are the experts. We're the ones that people look to to have this kind of innovation and, and lead and be out front. So that's our role. We purchased our own cold form rolling machine. We pick the specific system that we have to roll form, not for speed, not for mass production output. Our machine, like we like to say, is slow and smart versus super fast and dumb. It's for efficiency and it's for quality. Design is what drives um, this operation first. I know how buildings should be built. I look at it as I'm building these buildings in a computer. Okay, so it's still everything that I've learned out in the field, I put it to very practical use, designing. We have our, our project managers and our designers working at our office. Through software, they are laying out all the wall layout in our shop. We upload what Brian sends us and uh, press the button and start making packages. By buying materials at the raw stage, we control the whole supply chain management of our product. We get all those coils in place, so you know, we're not searching around looking for coils all day. And that's being fed into the cold roll former. Uh, there's a, a dimple is pressed in there through the machine, showing where the stud layout's gonna be, showing where the door rough openings are gonna be positioned. Uh, each unit is bundled separately. From there we palletize things, get it on a truck and out the door. And then it's off to the job site. So each unit has its own, own marking. You know, so we'll break that off and spread that out on the floor. And that way we know when that person comes into this unit, he should have every piece that is involved in, in constructing this, this unit. You know, they have this numbering on here that the machine actually dies onto the, the material. Our carpenters are then taking that material, fastening bottom track to the floor. And if you can see on the floor, you have these little numbers right here. So 10, 8, 5, and that's all correlated with that uh, track bundle. So there's a dimple in the bottom track. There's a corresponding recess or indentation in the top and bottom of the studs. You know, I could set these two studs, walk away, they're kind of sturdy from the dimples, and I know I could keep going with my stud layout. Typically, we will screw the bottom of the stud, leave the top of the stud floating to allow for uh, movement in the building. That's saving us a lot of time on layout. It's saving us a lot of waste material that, uh, as I said, there's very little to nothing being cut in the field. If there's a change in the field, we have to know about it immediately. We used to spend tens of thousands of dollars on blueprints. Instead of walking around with rolling a table around with all your blueprints, you walk around with a tablet. 
With the iPads, it's everything is being uploaded from our office. So you're not waiting on changes. So then they know what has to be addressed. They can forward the information along if we need an answer from the engineers, the architect. So technology plays a huge role because BIM modeling and so forth helps us catch problems early on in the process, which then eliminates you know excessive back charges or change orders that aren't foreseen later in the job. It, this is all around us whether it's panelization or modular construction. So we're looking at right now expanding our facility, getting more machines um, so we can start to go on a national approach and not just in the Midwest. The Carpenters Union has always treated us like a partner and every time we take on something like this, uh, we bring them in to discuss it and to see how we can apply this better to what we do take on approach like we do, which is basically the, the yes and approach. Is yes, we can do this, yes, we should do this. Every operation and every venture we go into as a way to better the industry and better our carpenters and better the industry as a whole to attract talent into this industry. When you, you have an idea about something, you feel it's going to work and you think it's the right thing to do, and then you actually see it prove itself out in the field then it's a really good feeling. What we're trying to do here is maximize efficiency, minimize waste, keep our union carpenters employed, keep them working, and keep a happy customer. Open up that door, and I was in shock, on it, and then all the confetti is falling down on you, and the music going, and this and that, it was wild. When you have plumbing issues in your home, it can disrupt your whole routine. At Plumbers 911, we connect you with a highly experienced plumber in five minutes or less. We call it our five minute promise. All of our expert plumbers are highly trained, background checked, licensed, and insured, so you can feel confident that your job will be done right the first time. Our phones are open 24 7 to help solve your problem, day or night, at 1 833 PLUM 911. Plumbers 911, your plumbing connection. We are DeWalt. We're the ones who grind it out. The ones using materials from all over the world to build the things that build America right here in America. And there's no place we'd rather be. Land of the free, tools of the brave. This is a team. It's made up of different players, positions, skills, talented, sure, but on their own. Because every team needs a coach, someone who makes things work together. That's how less it works. We're coaches in the construction industry, bringing together laborers and management, unions and contractor associations. Our work leads to safer, stronger construction, which is a win for us all. As any skilled tradesperson will tell you, job safety is always the top priority. And being safe at work can have some incredible benefits beyond leaving work healthy at the end of the day. The construction industry, as many are aware, is an inherently dangerous field to be in regardless of what trade you're in. But the laborers specifically are put in dangerous situations practically every minute of the day if you're not aware of what your surroundings are. The Labor Management Trust of Lesset was established during the 1998 negotiations by the Chicago Laborers District Council. And one of the general purposes of the Lesset Fund is to help advance the health and safety of the laborers who work in the construction industry as well as their families and the, the general public. From day one, our very first job we did 37 years ago, we had union laborers on the project and we've had them on every project since. Well, I've been working with Revcon Construction Corp for going on 31 years. That's key to safety also, having steady men that you keep on your, on your payroll. Our company is very safety driven and every morning we have a toolbox talk and go over the tasks we're going to perform that day so then everybody's on the same page. We wanted to recognize those laborers and those employers who recognize that safety is so important. We hand out 
$250 gift cards quarterly to eligible laborers and eligible contractors who nominate their laborers. Starts off by us randomly selecting 200 of our approximate 1,800 signatory contractors. The 200 contractors may nominate as many Layuna laborers that qualify as they wish. Of the first 50 forms completed and returned, Lessit randomly draws one gift card winner from each contractor. The big prize is the annual event. We have a brand new pickup truck to award. So from those contractors that do participate in the first through fourth quarter awards, they are automatically eligible. As well as laborers from another 200 randomly selected contractors. Well, I heard about it from someone from the office because she definitely puts us all in for the safety program. Very safe dude, very safe. Uh, he has his certifications, OSHA 30, OSHA 10. After the entry deadline, all the nominees are grouped by local, and one lucky laborer is selected from each local. And then it comes down to the finalists. We go to our training center in Homer Street. It's our big event. Everyone's pretty uh, pumped about it, and from there, at the end of the event, we have, let's say there's 12 finalists. From those 12 finalists, we'll have keys and pouches, and only one key is the genuine key that opens up the truck door. You first pick in to see who, what order you pick in. And each of the pouches are labeled one through 12. No one knows where the key is. And I got fifth pick. So now, four people ahead of me, and in the process, they went, tried to open up the door. One laborer. Um, we'll give it a try, and if he or she is unsuccessful, the next laborer comes up. There's a lot of nerves that go on with the laborers when we try and run through what the event will be like and kind of what the atmosphere will be like. It's, it's hard to replicate, and we try to show them videos and whatnot and try to put them at ease, but when it comes down to you possibly winning a, a brand new pickup truck, it, you're, I think your nerves and excitement get the best of you but uh, a lot of them a lot of them will go up and take their time others will be really nervous and kind of rush through it I was a fifth guy open up that door and I was in shock won it and all the confetti falling down on you and <laughs> music going and this and that it was wild the runners up you get a $250 stipend it's not easy not winning the truck when you're when you made it that far but um, they, they are all classy ladies and gentlemen. I hit the golden ticket, I guess. If I have two sons, and they're also going to be in the workforce before you know it, so I'm always preaching safety to them. And now the younger guy is taking that as a major occupational safety. So I guess all my preaching has caught up to everybody. That's all for this episode of Built to Last. Be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hey, Monica, you know what a donkey's favorite tool is? What? A wheelbarrow. Burrow. 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 Mm -hmm. Not barrel. Burrow. Burrow. She gets it. I do.